Hey, welcome. This is uh, the 2016 AP Macroeconomics free response question number two. Oh, I typed that wrong. It's supposed to say bank balance sheet. It's on the bank balance sheet. There, it's fixed. Um, I'm going to run through this. I actually ran through this in class the other day, but this is a good question. Um, good example of uh, monetary policy. Um with the Fed. And um, so let's dive in. Uh, number two, the following is the bank balance sheet of First Superior Bank. Uh, they have 2000 in de demand deposits, a net worth of zero dollars. This is a really small bank and not terribly valuable. Uh, they have reserves of 200 and loans of 1800. I'm going to pause for a minute and just say that my stylus battery is low. I'll swipe that away. Sometimes there will be other assets over here like uh, investments um, or securities or um, they might have instead of calling it reserves they might have some in reserves at the Fed and some in cash there's a lot of different things but the only things that really matter for us are going to be oh and over here we might have demand deposits like checking accounts uh, there might also be other uh, other things other than the equity you could have like savings accounts that we're not worried about but again, demand deposits are what we care about and reserves, whether it's cash or at the Fed, um, are the two things that really matter. Now, this bank, <clears throat> sorry, the reserve requirement is 10%. So before I even dive into the problem, I immediately know that this uh, bank is required to have 10% of this 2000 and they have 10% of that 2000 200 is 10% of 2000 so, part A, what is the dollar value of new loans that First Superior Bank can uh, can make? Well, they can't make any new loans. What's the dollar value? Zero dollar. Why? They, there's lots of different ways to say this, but they have no excess. My handwriting is so bad. Uh, reserves there they don't have any extras that they can um loan out you could say something they have no excess reserves you could say something like uh, they've loaned out all the money that they can you could say they're required to keep 200 and that's all they have in reserves however you want to say that but they have no excess reserves nothing extra that they can lend out man i tried to make that look better and it looks worse part b um Okay, this is driving me nuts. I gotta get this fixed. There we go. There we go. Uh, part B. Mr. Smith deposits a hundred dollars of new cash. So, if you're thinking about what happened here, um, this is now up to twenty one hundred because that's how much they owe to um, their customers. There's another twenty one hundred dollars in here, and their reserves must now be three hundred because they have that cash. Um, so this is our new scenario. Um, calculate the maximum amount of new loans that First Superior Bank can now make. Well, they're required to have 10% of this, which would be 210. They have 300. So it looks to me like they can lend 300 minus. I'm sh Look at all this work that I'm showing. They could lend now $90, which makes sense. They could lend 10% of that $100 that he deposited. Part C. As a result of Mr. Smith's $100 cash dep deposit, calculate the maximum change over time in each of the following uh, in the banking systems. Now, this is where you got to be a little bit careful. Um, we have $90 that we can now lend out. Um this cash deposit was already um, was already was already money supply. Um, we'll come back to that in a second because we're gonna oh part D there it's gonna say you know what's the maximum change over time in the money supply. Um, so I I get a little bit I don't love the way these questions get worded and you have to be a little careful here, but how much can we get in um, new loans? Well, we can get $90 in loans, right? That was our first loan, which would become a deposit. 
you know, that gets deposited at some bank and that bank could lend out another 81 of that doubt of, of that $90 and that would get spent. And then somebody would take that money and deposit it and you could do another 72 90 and that would get spent and then deposited. And so anyway, if this process happens over and over again, we need a multiplier and we need to know, you know, after that happens, how much does it all add up to? Well, we have a multiplier. It's simply one over the reserve requirement, which in this case is 10%, point 0.1. And we can multiply that times the $90 of that first loan. And we get $900 in new loans after it's gone through the banking system over and over again. And yes, theoretically, at some point, somebody was borrowing like a fraction of a penny. Sorry. Um, next question is, what is the maximum change in the demand deposits? Well, all of this money that all this 900 that was lent out um, is going to end up being deposited because somebody will borrows it to buy something and then the person who they bought it from is going to take that money and put it in the bank. So we're going to get $900 of new demand deposits. But if you include the $100 from Mr. Smith, um, then I guess it's $1,000. So I would say I'm not always certain what they're asking for. In a free response, I can say $900 from the new loans plus... $100 of Mr. Smith's deposit for a total of 1000 if you include the initial deposit. I'm a little unsure when they ask this question because they're saying as a result of that deposit. So are they talking about including that deposit or all the deposits that happen after that? So I think I would probably just play it on the safe side. You can in a free response. That is way more words than I want to write, but um, I, I want to make sure I get credit there. And it is a little unclear in the wording there. Uh, lastly, as a result, or not lastly, part D, as a result of Mr. Smith's um, $100 cash de deposit, calculate the maximum change over time in the money supply. Well, this one's a little easier because this $100 definitely that he deposited was already part of the money supply. It was cash that he had. Um, and so the new growth is going to be that $900 um, that happens from all that lending process. So the math here follows the same uh, logic. We use that money multiplier times that $90 that gets lent out for a total of 900. Or you could say 100 times 10 minus the initial 100, uh, whichever way you want. Lastly, part E. Why would the actual change in the money supply um, or provide one reason why it could actually be smaller than the maximum change we calculated in part D. And, and the basic reason there is uh, it's similar to uh, the multiplier on the, the spending multiplier. If people save more, um, we don't get as big of a spending multiplier effect. That was last unit. Well, here it's the same thing. If banks hold on to extra reserves, banks hold extra reserves, or, um, if people don't deposit all their money, that'd be maybe another reason. If people, um, if if people held on to their, ex, held on to extra cash, um, basically, if anybody's holding on to extra cash, it's not going to have that that same effect that it would otherwise. We wouldn't get the maximum effect. Um, so that's how I would go through that one. Um, I spent longer on it than I would actually in real life if I were taking it, uh, but I hope that helped hearing my kind of thinking through. So. With that, 